I do think the Fed's been careful. Obviously, it wants to telegraph all of its punches here. But I think there's a fairly reasonable timetable, which I think uh, President Rosengren of the Boston Fed was outlining there. Uh, at the Jackson Hole meeting at the end of next week, I expect that uh, Chairman Powell will talk about announcing a timetable uh, shortly. And I think they will announce that timetable either at the uh, Jackson Hole meeting, but more likely at the September meeting, in the middle of September. And that what they're going to say is they're going to start tapering either in December or January, I think probably in December. So uh, that'll be the start. But until then, you know, I think why haven't rates gone up? Because there's actually not that much excess supply of treasuries right now. Uh, we have a debt ceiling in place, so the Treasury Department really can't issue a whole pile more debt. And the Federal Reserve is still buying $120 billion worth of bonds every month. So uh, at the moment, there isn't a huge demand on the market. But over time, I do expect the Fed to begin that tapering um, at the end of this year. And I think it's going to have an effect as the economy strengthens, as inflation continues to be high. Um, I do expect those long-term rates to go up. Is it fair to use history as a guide? Because many point to what happened back in the 2013 taper tantrum, and yet, uh, naturally, experience is different now, the mood is different now, and valuations in the market are different now as well, aren't they? Well, yeah, but I, I think history does it should be some guide to us here. You know, the taper tantrum was just talk about tapering that really caused the problem. This is actually just you know, a, a ready, set, go in terms of reducing bond purchases starting in December. So I think, uh, you know, there's a reason for markets to be a little upset. But also, we're at extraordinarily low levels of yields. We've got real 10-year Treasury yields are well into negative territory. A 10-year tips yield, you know, which uh, uh, takes out inflation, is minus 1.1 percent. So these are very low yields. And they're not appropriate for an economy that is barreling towards full employment here. I think one of the things the markets have missed is you don't need to get the unemployment rate down to 3.5% to have significant wage inflation. We've got a lot of dislocation in the labor market right now. So I think even with unemployment at 5.4%, we are getting wage inflation. There's plenty of inflationary impulse in the economy. And I think that will ultimately lead to higher bond yields.